seeing in particular, or I find a lot of clients come to me for, yeah. is abuse. Yeah. And the abuse patterns that happen, and what the auras do while someone's being abused, physically or mentally or emotionally or all of the above, mm. and how interesting their auras are on both sides. Yeah. It's always two sides to the game, and how they keep doing the same pattern again and again in behavior, mm. in words, but also energetically. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. So, so um, the difference between, um, if you could, because I know there's just so much to talk about, and, and in a moment, a bit later, we will go to music break just to give you a chance to have some water. Um, but uh, for people that have gone through physical abuse, mental abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, spiritual abuse, um, are they are they? Because I see definitely see differences in the aura. Um, obviously, the aura gets uh, can be shattered and cracked, and obviously affects the. The, the chakras, which is connected to the internal organs, which is connected to everything indirectly to meridians. So th there's a whole science to metaphysics. But um, for, for yourself, do you see a difference or a sense or a feel from the different levels of, of abuse? Uh, yes, definitely. And also the different phases of the cycle of yeah. what the person's in. Mm -hmm. um, in you know, if, if you look at the abuse cycle, mm -hmm. I don't know if you want if we have time for that. Yeah, no, we've got lots of time, please, because uh, th this is actually very important. Because I have received emails um, from last year to to actually touch on on abuse, and then obviously emails, and it's become more. Please talk about abuse. So you know that's also part of why we've got you here. So yeah, yeah. I think I think the reason I've specialised in abuse and relationships is because I was abused as a child, and I have been abused myself in relationships mm -hmm. and while being abused and seeing the energy pattern is fascinating it's also earth shattering yeah. <laughs> at the same time but it definitely helped me you know it helped me learn and hopefully I'll be able to help others from what I've seen and what I've experienced myself mm -hmm. but the pattern how I tend to find you know we all get into relationships and it's all good and hunky-dory and happy in the beginning honeymoon phase if you want to call yeah. it and then slowly the, the tension starts building. Mm. And the, the victim might feel as if they're walking on eggshells, trying to plead the abuser. Mm. Uh, and nothing is good enough. And the victim is scared, depressed. You know, the abuser is irritated, short-tempered, aggressive. Mm. And this carries on and builds and builds to where they reach a point, what I call the trigger. Mm -hmm. This trigger might be jealousy, an affair, Often alcohol is involved. Mm. It might be parenting issues. It might be money issues. But this is the this is the point where the person just loses it. And um, I counsel abusers as well. I'm actually counseling one tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I always say to them, at that point, you have a choice to walk away, or to stay and abuse, or to stay and not abuse. What is it that makes them stay and abuse? Mm. And often alcohol and just pure habit comes into it, but then they work. Then they they move on to what I call blast, and this is where the abuse happens. The abuse might be verbal, emotional. The this is when the abuser or the perpetrator's energy is at its strongest. It's red. It's angry. It's it's grabbing at the other person. It's angry, horrible, negative. Uh, victim tends to play poor media. Their energy is tired, depressed, grey, sort of sloppy, holes, cracked. Mm. They're they at their lowest point here. Yeah. Um, they, it, it's almost like the abuser's energy is scratching and clawing at their energy. If you, if you know the kind of feeling I'm trying to put mm. through, they're gone. Yeah. And, and they have maximum power here and they're threatening the other person, intimidation. Mm. And then mm. after the abuse has occurred, um, it comes to a place where they go to stillness and quiet. And now the energy turns a bit and the abuser is regretting it. And he's thinking, will the victim leave me? What have I done? Why do I do this? Mm. And the victim's depressed, low self-esteem. Do I deserve this? They ask him. The victim, why does this happen? They may feel they deserve it. Some people feel they deserve it. Or if they... Some people even think it shows, some people I've heard the saying where they say, at least he loves me enough to, 
to give me attention, to hit me, to try, to bite. Mm. It sounds crazy, John, but... Yeah. No, 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 I mean, I'll, I'll give um, the listeners an experience. I mean, um, yeah. and it's, we're going to talk about traits because I think it's very, very important for people to pick things up. But, um, uh, I mean, I've, I've got a friend who sat in a marriage for 18 years, um, being bounced around, thrown around, um, you know, uh, almost a broken leg, r- uh, ribs cracked, broken nose, yeah. um, uh, cheekbone, really banged up. Um, and and she, her thing kept saying, which I only found out after she left and still filing for divorce. But you know how South African law is. Um, you know, it's it's. She realised that, geez, I should have done this. Um, earlier but also there's parts of her and I know it's going to sound crazy to some listeners parts of her she turns around and says you know did I do the right thing to leave because maybe he will change yeah so that's where I'm coming now they in the stillness and this is a critical point the stillness this is the point where the victim hopefully may leave Hopefully they realize that this isn't love, this isn't true love, and they leave and they start completing themselves and uh, making themselves happy and finding a balance in themselves mm. and leave the, the thing. You know, either party can leave or either party can choose to change this pattern. Mm. But this is the place to leave if they want to. And I've actually got quite a few videos on YouTube around when to leave and if to leave, what kind of pattern comes. And the next stage, so don't leave, tends to be honeymoon or happy for a bit. The victim's dead but hopeful. Will he get better? Will he change? Will it, will it happen again? They almost a bit sort of resign to it. Uh, and the abuser's behaving at the moment. He might be making gestures of goodwill. Yeah. You know, going for counselling. He mightn't have his whole heart and he might be promising all will be okay. But the interesting thing for me, so that's the cycle, and then the tension builds again and the trigger, and it continues. Mm. The, the funny thing is people almost get addicted to the energy cycle of abuse. Mm. Uh, it, it's in a way exciting, and it, the, the tension's very high between them, and that exchange of energy mm. is, is very high, even though it's a negative exchange. Mm. They take it as a very intense love. I don't know if you found that, John. Yeah, no, I do. And, and also what I wanted to bring in, um, some of them actually get a sexual high, believe it or not. So well, we've all I, read the book. So. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's insane. You know, for some people to say, my God, that is absolutely crazy. But one, if one goes into the psyche of, of um, why they do it, why they behave, um, yeah. you know, it's, yeah. So, I mean, I, I, know, I know some women um, that, that go to work with uh, glasses and they cover, they're trying, to cover, they're trying to mask it. But, I mean, everyone around them knows what's going on. And also for the listeners, um, it's not just um, uh, women. women that get abused. Yeah. I've also had in as well. yeah, yeah, I've also had cases where the men have been banged up and beaten up and by their own wives for years, not just once or twice. So... It's it's definitely not just uh, focused on women. A lot more guys are actually coming out and, and speaking yeah. about it. Yeah, I think it's almost harder for men because yeah. they've also got the whole male ego and mm. you know how strong are they? And their masculinity is also mm. broken by a woman. Yeah. What I find very interesting is when they get out the cycle, mm. they go through almost a pendulum phase. I find the the victims. Where they become aggressive themselves. Yeah. I don't know if you found this, John, yeah. but I find they tend to, when they get out to mm. other people, mm. they become aggressive, then they go non assertive. Mm. Aggressive, non assertive, aggressive, non assertive, until eventually they balance themselves and they become assertive. Mm. But they go through this phase of almost I matter and others don't matter to others matter and I, I don't matter. I'm mm. worthless. Yeah. Um, and they actually get aggressive. To, to, you know, the shopkeeper or the gardener or mm. the counsellor sometimes. Yeah. Is, I, I definitely have found that. But I have seen people break that cycle. Mm. I've seen that cycle being broken with people that are still married mm. and they live together happily. Mm. Um, they've lived, the one couple I'm thinking of has been together for 10 years now and there's been no abuse again mm-hmm. and there used to be frequent abuse. 
Um, and some people leave and find new relationships. Mm. But the trick is to leave and break the cycle and change your own headspace before you go and get another abuser. Yeah. And I mean, I've, I've got uh, one case. Um, uh, her belief was if she had to move away from with her husband, the abuser, to another city and retire to coast, that he would change. And it doesn't matter how much uh, counseling, eventually it's like, no, you know what, enough now. Um, because it's just you you're not go they, they've got to commit they've got to commit to want to help yeah. themselves yeah. I think that's the hardest thing is mm. the change has to happen in their own head mm. well eventually yeah. she got to a point where she every night she used to pray that he that he dies and I mean it's gonna sound crazy but that's what that's the kind of mental state that sometimes these people go into it's they, they yeah. I've been there you know yeah. I've been straight um, I've always been interested in relationships my whole life mm. because the, the, you know, a person's energy is very interesting, mm. but a person has to interact with somebody else. Mm. You know, you go to work and there's a work relationship. You have a child and you're in a child relationship. With. Mm. You have friends. So it's not only love relationships. Mm -hmm. It's the interaction of your energy and your puzzle piece with another person's puzzle piece is always fascinating. I'm...